everyone, welcome to another video on Ninefold Chess that I'm about to embark upon. I'm just going to start creating a game. Let's have five minutes for the first one. And I don't really care which colour I am, so that isn't really a problem. Okay, I'm black, and they've played, I think, the Hungarian opening is the official name. With G3 and E3, very strange. Very, very strange. Um, okay, very weird. Okay, let's just play normally. I'm playing some sort of weird hippopotamus system. I'm not entirely sure I've ever seen this before. Yeah, they're doing a hippo. So let's go bishop g4, hit the queen. Probably f3 will be played. If knight f3, I'm very, very happy. Yeah, queen d2, okay. Uh, bishop c5, maybe? Just to... Oh, bishop a3, yeah, that's a move. Okay. Queen e7, then queen takes bishop if they take me. Yep. Bishop h3. Right, I've got a knight on f6, so I'm not too worried. Alright, let's go... Let's go queen side. Queen side looks fun. And queen d1 hits my knight, so... Come forward with f5. h3 is being played. Knight f6. I've got a lot of initiative here. I'm thinking rook uh, h to e8, possibly. a3. Okay, all right. Now, I just need to make sure that they don't block everything up. So let's go d4. If they go e4, I'll take. If I'd gone e4, they could have gone d4 to block up the position. So I've got pawns on uh, f5, e5, d4. So, a pawn will get traded at some stage. Queen d2, okay. Queen d2, unusual move, but alright, I see the point of it. Uh, queen d2, queen d2, queen d2. Alright, well let's try sort of completely opening it up. Now that they've got pawns on e3, d3, I've got pawns on e4, d4. So there's going to be lots of trading. Rook h2 has been played. Very weird move, but I kind of understand it, I guess. Right, let's start capturing. They've taken with a c pawn. Okay, I'll now take here. Take with the f pawn. I've got a rook here. Knight e4 is coming. Let's go knight e4. Hit the queen. just looks horrible for them. They've got um, a weak g3 pawn as well. Queen c1 check can be played next turn, because my queen c5. They've gone queen b2. So they are... Are they not giving me the e3 pawn? Yeah, that because they've got a knight. I don't think either of their knights have moved. Okay, now they have. Um... Oh, um, yeah, it's interesting, interesting position. All right, knight takes g3, looks okay, but I want to play something else. One of those positions that I just feel like there should be a win. Oh, I can't, I can't see it though, that's the problem. So, all right, rook to h e8, Let's just, you know, finish him off, hopefully. My knight on e4 is actually not ideal, because I kind of want the rooks to have just a full full range to the king. Knight on e4 is blocking the e8 rook from successfully kind of lining up with it. Um, but I have things like knight takes g3 coming up. I don't think they've moved their knight on b1 the whole game. They should have a rook on a1, rook on h2 for some weird reason. Queen on b2, knights on e2 and b1, king on um, e1. And I've got rooks on e8, d8, knight on c6, knight on e4, queen e3. They have done d takes e4, okay. Alright, so this is my hope anyway. Capturing. Now queen c3, okay. Do I not have checkmate? Yeah, I do have checkmate. Okay, let's analyse that game. I'll play another one in a moment, so... 
for those of you who, who are not able to visualize 21 moves ahead, which might be a few of you. All right, g3. So this is a very, very strange setup. It's essentially playing the hippo as white, but this queen e2 move inserted just feels even less less accurate, less secure, less solid, whatever you want to call it, than the regular um, hippo. I suppose you can maybe afford to do it because it gives you a tempo, but the thing is you want to normally play knight to e2 after you think out the bishops. So it's a very provocative way of playing. Anyway, uh, bishop g4. Yeah, so this this position, I thought, I thought that bishop c5 was just a solid move. I've got the, what they call the Casablanca Knights, where the f7 pawn and c7 pawn don't really want to be there. At least one of them wants to be uh, on the fifth rank as well, so that I can push my pawns without white uh, closing the position. Right now, if I push e4, or if I push d4, they push their other pawn forwards and they block the, the center. So I kept the tension. I think this was the right, right plan to... Uh, not avoid the trade of bishops and simply to improve the queen. And then, again, I keep tension. There's no reason to capture them. Let them take me. So that will force my pieces up the board. And in this queen d1 move, uh, sort of proving that the queen shouldn't have been triangulating round e2, d2, d1. So yeah, f5. Now I've got the three pawns on the fifth rank that I need. Drop the knight. And then a3. This is actually not a bad system, the hippo. Uh, as if the knights are on, instead of on their starting positions, if they were on e2 and d2, and white had double fianchettoed the bishops and castled on the king's side, it's not easy for black to break this down. Uh, you, black's like never worse, uh, unless, unless I blunder a lot. Um, but it can be a good compact structure and a way to kind of uh, annoy your opponent into making uh, mistakes. So yeah, d4 just prevents white playing e4 because I capture it. And here, after my move e4, I thought that this was the best way of just completely opening the position. If I capture them first, which might be the best move, like this, and then they take me, I could go knight e4 just like the game, but I wanted to have the option of playing e4 myself, and the thing was that they could then play d4. Again, closing the position a bit. I don't really want that to happen. That's why I went e4, keeping uh, tension one more move. Also preventing stuff like knight f3. So it's a good uh, prophylactic move as well. And I thought that surely this was the right time to release tension. But it's possible that the king is so weak uh, and their pieces are so bad, I could have waited one extra move. Instead of capturing a lot on uh, the third rank, I could have maybe played rook h e8 first so that white would do some... It's sort a of pointless move. And I'd have I'd have uh, this position just with the rook on e8, which would be even stronger. Anyway, knight to e4 looked good to me, because queen c1 and queen takes e3, knight takes queen, knight takes g3, rook takes d3. Just so many threats, and white can't meet them all. So queen b2 prevented uh, several of them. Check, knight e2. Now, possibly knight t takes g3 was the correct move here, but I wasn't sure if white could play queen d2. And then maybe I don't quite win this and I have to like trade pieces and things. So I want to keep the pieces on with rook e8. And this is a little bit, uh, I don't know, a little bit sort of speculative. I thought that I would have enough here. Uh, yeah, okay, I definitely have enough. Interesting. So I think my move was the most obvious, rook takes e4. And it's either going to be the strongest move or it's going to be the top top three quite easily. Uh, for a few moments the computer was sort of debating which one was better and it still isn't 100% sure. Um, either knight to e5 with the idea of knight d3 and knight f3 or the more simple rook takes e4. To me rook takes e4 is so much easier because I'm threatening mate on g one, which is exactly what happened, because they were pinned. Uh, but I've also got loads of other threats. So rook g2, for example, then I can go knight e5. And I even have weird like rook sacks with sort of rook d1 and stuff in uh, a few hypothetical scenarios where uh, I need the king to move and then I can checkmate it. So yeah, it's by minus 10 if white plays perfect. So that's, that's proving I'm winning. 
and then yeah queen c3 was chosen and then i had mate in one with queen g1 mate so okay nice game uh maybe i could have played a bit better but playing a 2000 no no to the board generally i'm i'm quite happy with that all right let's try a little bit uh, more time let's try eight minutes which is the uh sort of quickest time control you can have where it's a rapid play game again i'm going to play on casual mode so that we're not rated and <laughs> great name i like that comfortable all right they're, they're 20 nearly 2300 they're pretty solid as a player all right sicilian opening e4 c5 knight f3 d6 all right i'm just going off my theory d4 takes takes i assume which version of the Sicilian am I going to get? Let me get nice f3. So you can play f3 in those positions, but I, cho I chose knight c3 main line, the uh, sort of Nidorf type positions with uh, a6. Uh, all right, why not? Let's go bishop g5. I normally go bishop e2 because it's just a very, very safe move. Uh, yeah, e6. And what's the theory these days? I think it's f4. h6 immediately okay uh h6 immediately i can't remember if i'm meant to go bishop h4 i feel like it's a move uh, and then they go g5 don't they i take there's some weird line like knight is there some weird knight move i can't remember i should know this but i've forgotten it uh if g5 like worst case scenario i can yeah bishop okay bishop e7 so they do have some uh, tactics on my bishop which is not adequately defended so I'm going to play a, a subpar move bishop f2 um, this probably is not correct but it just gets me out of any kind of tactics so this is a safety move essentially and it improves the bishop a little bit I'm just safeguarding the diagonal b5 okay going straight for uh, my knight on c3 Okay, let's play a safety move again. A3, playing a bit cautiously in this, this position. Uh, bishop B7 is almost certainly going to be played. Uh, if not now, then, then when will it be played? Okay, and let's go Let's go into the lion's jaws with queen F3. Uh, so I'm lining up myself with the bishop, which is not usually what you want to be doing. Uh, but I feel like I'm, I'm guarded enough. Then let's play something. Ooh, I could I could do something weird like bishop takes b5. Could do something weird. With the bishop on um, f2, though, I think castle and kingside is very, very safe now. So I think that's what I'll do. And I'll play rook ad1. Uh, or I'll play rook d1, then castle, which might be more accurate. So knight c5 is certainly a move for white. Aiming at my pawn which I haven't fully figured out what to do after that. Knight c5 might be very good, actually. Uh, I guess I have bishop d3, worst case scenario, but then that would mean I'd lose a tempo. Uh, queen g3 is possible, but that feels wrong somehow. Yeah, knight c5, I just didn't um, pay full attention to that move. All right, knight c5, uh, knight takes... Nah. Okay, I'm just going to play, play boring with bishop d3. Very, very boring. Shouldn't have gone bishop e2. Should have just gone my... In my instinct was actually to play bishop d3 at move 12. But my uh, my inclination is always to play bishop e2. So I sort of thought... I kind of overrode my instinct. And said, no, my intuition is incorrect here. Uh, the sort of general pattern that I go into bishop e2 must be right. And I paid for it. Always, always follow intuition. Your intuition is my kind of internal monologue uh, all the time just follow your instincts that's why you have them all right rook c8 yeah just keeping tension on the board all right so let's try let's try rook d1 instead of castles i don't really want to castle queen side that looks looks very dangerous now black has the initiative if i castle uh, on that side yeah kingside castles and i will also do kingside castles so yeah, black has a slight initiative on the queen side, I want to say. Um, but I do have the center, and I am thinking about moves like queen g3 coming along later on. Sort of gaining, gaining something here. Or even pushing e5 at some stage. Queen c7, okay. Queen c7, 
They've got a pawn on d6, pawn on e6, so I don't have... There's no immediate, like, loss. Uh, right. So my rook's on d1. Knife f5 is always my, one of my favourite moves. Uh, okay, what about if I play... I'm looking at something like queen e2 here. Just to play safe. Yeah, I'm just going to play it safe, queen e2. It's probably a terrible move. Um, but again, I'm just trying to try to sort of keep the position interesting, keep keep uh, keep myself not losing, and ideally trade pieces at the right moment. All right, now I think either e5, e5 or push. Uh, if I push, it does look fun if I push. It does look very fun. Yeah, I just I, I restrict their pieces a bit, so let's push e5. And I'm hoping that I can play f5 very, very soon. They they don't have much attacking my e5 pawn. They've got the queen. That's about it. All right, knife, knight f e4. Okay, that disconnects my pieces a little bit. Uh, knight f e4, okay. So f5, queen takes... Um, e5 f5 queen takes e5 no i need to i need to do knight takes knight i think they'll take with the pawn oh of course they got a knight on c5 haven't they it's a stupid blunder i meant to take with the, for some reason i thought i should take with the bishop and then realized i shouldn't but well um yeah it's just a huge blunder <laughs> that's not good uh, all right, never mind. So I thought for some reason I had bishop takes, and then I had enough pieces on it, but uh, it's a silly mistake from me. All right, bishop takes uh, b5 then. Okay, this isn't shaping up to be so good. All right, well, I'll get, what will I get, a pawn or two for it, maybe? Now queen takes c2, don't they? That's the problem. Queen B. Maybe they don't have queen. <laughs> maybe they don't have. Oh no, the knights on c5. Of course it is. The knights on c5. That's the. Uh, that's that's the thing. I saw that obviously. <laughs> um, all right. So they've got a pawn. They've got. Uh, okay. So knight on c5. Bishop b7. Queen b8. Rook c8. Bishop e7. Um, I've got a pawn on e5. That's like the good thing. Uh, right. Uh, bishop on f. Bishop on f2. Knight on d4. Yeah, we traded knights on e4, and I lost the bishop. Yeah. Okay. So knight to d6 is a move. Let's go knight d6. My instinct says this is probably wrong, but but let's let's go for it anyway. Uh, the plan is, if they take with the bishop, I guess I should take with the rook. Try and double up the rooks and have some some influence in the game. And it's an octopus knight. It looks quite nice. Don't really have a good attack on the king. That's the problem. I, I kind of want to have some kind of initiative here. So another reason to do knight d6 is that I can play f5 more easily. Because uh, their black queen won't be attacking e5 in the future. Maybe I should have done it straight away. Okay, rook c. Okay, rook c7. Interesting. All right, knight d6, rook c7. Okay. Um. All right. Well, with that in mind, let's go. Let's go f5. Try to get. Try to get something. Try to get some kind of initiative. If I can play f6, that would be very nice. Okay, e takes f5. Okay, knife f5 as always. And I've got I don't know, I've got queen g4 or some other rubbish if if uh, I'm allowed to. If I can get in queen g4, I have chances. Okay, knight to e6. Yeah, that stops me having fun. Uh, okay, queen g4 is still a move though. Still an option. I have uh, knight takes h6 check. Which 
is I doubt going to happen, but it's it's always nice. King H7, yeah. True. Uh, okay. So okay, just thinking. All right, let's let's try a ridiculous move here. Looks totally ridiculous. I think it's dropping the exchange, but I'm I'm trying to go for go for some mild uh, mild threats here. You know, make my opponent um uneasy essentially. Wow, they went G six. What a move! Yeah, what a move. G six. Okay, not even taking me with the. Uh, wait, they do have bishop on um e seven, don't they? <laughs> I want to say they have bishop on e seven. Uh, wow, what a move. Um, yeah, very nice. Okay. Wow, this is a fascinating position here. Um, so there is rook takes, uh, so rook takes knight. Maybe, um, yeah, very, very complicated. All right, let's try, let's try sort of keeping, keeping all the tension with bishop e3. So that if pawn takes knight, I have queen takes, which could be very, very effective. And if bishop takes, then I don't know what to do, but I might have I might have some kind of initiative going on. I'll be very interested to see how badly I'm losing in this game. It's all sorts of ridiculous stuff happening here. And without sight of the board, it's becoming uh, very hard to keep all the images and the the uh, lines in my head because I've got. An Ompre's knight, an Ompre's rook, uh, a bishop and a queen on e3 and g4, uh, respectively. Uh, I'm threatening all these weird sort of sacrifices and stuff. And bishop g5 has been chosen, okay. Bishop g5, oh come on, I have to take it. Unless, no, no, no unless, no unless, let's just capture it. Knight takes g5 is what I'm expecting, to be honest. I mean, for them to take knight, knight takes g5, it's kind of illegal for me to do knight takes g5 now. Uh, if they do pawn takes... Yeah, they've done knight takes, okay. So knight takes, now here's the ridiculous move. Knight, knight takes h6. What I'm hoping is that uh, my rook on f1 is now alive. My rook on d6 is alive. Queen on g4 is there. And, uh, yeah, king takes h6. Okay, so now, I'm hoping this works. Check. King g7, yeah. And then, king takes g5. Okay, so I've got a rook on d6, rook on f1, queen g5, pawn e5. I'm hoping I have just enough to win the game with rook takes f7 at the end. of. Oh, no, they have rook on c7. Ah. Oh, no, it might still work. Maybe. Yeah, it might still work, actually. Rook takes f7 is the plan. You know, it's obviously incredibly hard for me to calculate this all in my head. I'm probably missing like a major piece they have on the board or something which will squash me at the right moment. But if they play something weird, like pawn e3, or something totally out of the blue, like queen a8, you know, something, something that has no, no influence over the position... I think rook takes f7 wins through various tactics. And they're down to a minute, so they don't have a lot of time to analyse all this stuff. If they move the f pawn, I can probably take it. So, okay, queen e8. Okay, so queen e8, that would actually stop me doing my plan, which is very, very annoying. It's a good move from them. Uh, yeah, that's a very nice move. So it stopped me doing um, stuff. Okay, so... Okay, so that my pawn's on e5. Their rook's on c7. So rook takes f7, queen takes, doesn't work. They've got a pawn. I've got a pawn on e5, don't I? I've got a pawn on e5. 
So, check. King G8, I assume. So I believe that they, they have an extra piece because I sacrificed the bishop earlier because I stupidly lost it. Now, I believe the extra piece is the bishop on b7. And they've got a rook on c7, rook on f8, queen e8, and a king on g7. King h7, okay, so rook f4 is my hope. And I go rook h4, rook h8 mate. I'm hoping this is enough. If I win, I don't want to jinx it, but hypothetically, not saying I'm going to, hypothetically if I won, it would be my first ever win blindfolded against a player who's over 22.50. Okay, g5 has been chosen. Um, so queen h6, king over... Yeah, I think I win. Queen h6, so I've got rook on d6. And then queen takes... Yeah, and then I was going to go rook h4, rook h6, mate. Wow, what a game. I am going to uh, go through this on a computer analysis because I do not trust myself to analyse this position correctly. <laughs> um, I'm very, very happy with this game, if you couldn't tell by the sound of my voice. Uh, despite there being, I'm sure, a ton of blunders, um, already it's analysed like two moves and I blundered. Uh, so so not uh, it's not going to be the best game of chess ever played. But, but I like that I was resourceful. I think I was I was always finding some kind of weird move to keep me in the match. This reminds me of a game I played at the British Championships uh, two years ago. Right, I beat a. I think he was an FM then. He might be an IM now. I can't remember. But he was uh, rated about twenty two ninety, twenty three hundred, or maybe higher. And I was a piece down most of the game, but kept on finding all these uh, tactical sort of shots kept me in the game and eventually I won because he blundered and yeah this is a good um, indicator that I played well isn't it uh, I say sarcastically uh, essentially yeah the, if it's a white part of the bar I've I'm ahead if it if the if the, the uh, sort of bar is going under the the uh, level line and shows a sort of black graph it means that um, blacks ahead and it looks like I, I was ahead for like one move just before the end and then the last couple of moves I was ahead and the rest of the game except for a tiny tiny portion of the opening black is essentially ahead the entire match I made five inaccuracies one mistake four blunders uh, they managed to do five blunders they they, they managed to uh, surpass me in the mistakes and stuff 75 center point loss which is pretty bad overall that's that's quite bad considering I normally get like 30 or 40 uh, but fascinating game so let's go to the beginning uh, now okay mainline Sicilian there's not really a lot to talk about this has been covered by many many uh, annotators grandmasters commentators etc so essentially this is just book theory with bishop g5 e6 and when I was first starting out in playing long play chess or uh, standard play chess the line that everyone was doing back then about 13 years ago i want to say maybe 12 maybe 12 years ago uh, because it had been played in a, a i think the candidates tournament like a year earlier um was this uh Nidorf line with f4 and then h6 wasn't the, the usual move back then it was uh let me see bishop e7 because i played this as both white and black <laughs> then queen f5 uh Oh, Queen F3, I mean. What was it? Castles? I think it was Castles. I might have got the move order wrong, and I almost definitely have. Uh, here. And I think it was G4. And then there was something, some weird line. Uh, Queen C7, that was it. Queen C7 was played. And then, yeah, as white, I used to play the move Bishop takes F6, which was not, it's not that accurate now. I think the main line is now Bishop uh I think it's bishop g2, if I remember right. And king b1, I think, has been played a few times. But anyway, I used to do the move. Bishop takes f6. They would take back. I would then push. And they drop back. 
And then here, it, the line split into playing either f5 as white and gambit the g-pawn with check. <laughs> and you, the idea is you get the g-file to attack. But the main line move a lot of players were doing was h4, which I used to do uh, more often than not. Uh, I think b5, or something like bishop h3, bishop b7. And then you had all these ridiculous lines with stuff like bishop takes e6. Uh, knight takes e6, and... The game would sort of continue with both sides having no idea what was going on. Uh, and you'd have something like this, or maybe it was root takes, actually. I think it was root takes. And uh, white's, I think, material ahead? Yeah, white's material ahead. Two pawns and a rook for bishop and knight. Or two bishops, actually. Two bishops. So, uh, materially, that's a pawn up. But the, the, bishop, the bishop pair is like worth an extra pawn as well. Uh, so when you consider that, it's more like an equal position in terms of raw material. Black has some pawn structure weaknesses, uh, like three pawn islands and a weak uh, IQP. White has the centre, but black has more initiative after things like b4, rook c8, and even a uh, liberating d5 break can occasionally be done. So if I turn on a computer, I, I probably messed up the line somewhere. Um, essentially, yeah, I thought, I thought white was meant to be a bit better. And it says plus two, so I probably messed up somewhere. But essentially, this this kind of thing was being played a lot, and I would play it for both sides. But now, now it's been you know updated over the years, and I don't know the most uh, recent theory. So it's possible that h6 is now the kind of innovative move which uh, cuts out some white options. E7 is apparently a mistake. Now bishop f2. Yeah, I think Queen F3 must be the main line. But I feel like I've seen a game of Carlsen, um, but I could be wrong in in who it is I've attributed this to. But I have seen a game where some some top-level player did Bishop F2, and it's to try and curtail the idea of Queen B6. So it removes Black's counterplay, and it's just one of those moves which is... you know, It's not great, it's not going to be like fighting for the advantage... But it's going to completely cut out Black's plan. You're you're going to have your own plan of controlling the diagonal and maybe casting Kingside, and then you just have a game where you know White's got their own plan, Black has theirs, and it's just a battle of wits essentially. It's it's a sidestepping all the sort of twenty moves of theory. So even though Queen F3 is the sort of book line, and then the computer gives I assume what's book, with, yeah, Bishop E2, Knight E6, Queen G3 feel like I've seen this kind of position before. And then a bunch of trades. Pawn takes. Would have thought queen takes would be stronger, but okay. E5, oh, I see. So, oh, okay. Oh, I see. It's trying, okay, so you have like the Karakhan sort of knight on d5, and if white takes it, black takes the c-pawn. And if white doesn't take it, that knight's going to be anchored to d5. Okay, and then this will be about level, I assume. So... All right, bishop f2 may be a slight inaccuracy, but it's just a sort of sidestepping line, which allows b5, because now I don't have the queen out on f3, and my ability to play e5 is uh, nowhere near as strong. So this a3 move is one of the best, but it is a bit prophylactic, and it doesn't really improve me. Queen f3, bd7. And there was a friend of mine who is a... I want to say a rival, although uh, I used to beat him all the time, and he's now beaten me, I think, the last two times we played. Uh, so maybe he is starting to just become stronger than me, which is... I don't know quite know how to feel about that. But anyway, he, we had a game It was really sort of complicated, and I just blundered on, like, move 20 and totally lost. And it was in a position like this, where I castled queenside, and then later played king b1 as a kind of safety move. And he pointed out that when you castle queenside... The two sort of prophylactic safety moves are either king b1 or pawn a3, and you generally don't do both. It's one or the other. Uh, so my my thought was that if I castle queenside, then my king is going to be stuck on c1 essentially, unless I'm forced to c to b1. And leaving my king on the c file in this type of position just looks so dangerous. And then I've wasted the tempo with a3. And black can do stuff like d5 and sack on a3 and, and squash me. So that was part of my reasoning that I was I was thinking of castling kingside. And here, 
I'm actually going to switch on the computer to see whether... Yeah, so bishop d3 is the best move. My instinct was right, and my uh, my brain said bishop d3, my hand said uh, bishop e2. And yeah, rook d1 looks also like it was quite a good move, which is what I played later. The, the, if I'm not going to castle queenside, the rook belongs on d1. And I was briefly considering g4, but that is not in the vocabulary of the computer in this position. Uh, it's actually not... Okay, now it is. <laughs> I was about to say, if it's like 0.6, that's not a lot worse than any of the other moves, really. Uh, but yeah, black has the uh, g5 is an interesting break to try and disrupt my harmony of pawns on the king side. Although I do feel like rook c8 is a more natural move. But yeah, g5 is a really sort of interesting uh, bolt. And yeah, rook c8 is starting to catch up as a as a move on the evaluation. Either way, black is significantly better. So g4 is not the right move. So yeah, especially to small inaccuracy, minor minor mistake. So I lose tempi. Rook c8, rook d1, castles, castles, queen c7. Yeah, queen e2 is a mistake, is, well, mistake or inaccuracy. I just didn't know what to do here. Um, I did think about rook fe1 briefly, but the thing is that I want to attack um, the center and the king side. So I kind of felt like the rook on f1 belonged there, because that's a really good uh, marriage between the king side and the center on the f file. You're controlling both. And rook fe1 is a lot more center than it is king side. I didn't really know how to proceed on the king side uh, if I played rook fe1. Although the computer claims that g6 is correct, I assume that's to try and uh, try and prevent f5. Or if they, if black's going to go pawn e5, prevent knight f4, f5. Either way, it controls the f5 square. And yeah, rook fe8, and the idea might be to play bishop to g7 as well. So another reason for g6. Queen e3, yeah, because f5 might have been a threat with the idea of queen takes h6. So bishop f8 not only reroutes it to g7, improves the rook, and uh, improves the king, and the bishop as well. It also just protects everything, which is, uh, suits my style if I was playing as black. Then yeah, e5, bishop pair for black. The old sort of you know knight d5 uh, tabia, just keep that knight. Uh, anchored in the center so trades and uh, yeah rook c3 so I'm kind of switching the plan from king side to queen side almost yeah this is a kind of position I wouldn't be too happy playing because black has the bishop pair and it's the kind of position where I don't think I have enough initiative to to make up for that and there isn't really a lot of you know weaknesses black has that that uh, makes up for the fact that they have the two bishops so it's the kind of position where I'd always be trying to hold for for the draw. All right, d5, yeah, e5. Knight f e4, yeah, it's just a total blunder, this move. I was really annoyed at myself for this. It's just so stupid. Obviously, bishop takes is the right move. Clearly the right move. And then, yeah, they'll take, I'll take, they'll take. This is what I'd analysed in my head. And then I thought, okay, I didn't see bishop e3, I'll be honest. All right, so the computer lines bishop d5 threatening bishop c4, so I don't allow the skewer. Then bishop c5 to sort of, it's not quite pin, but it's kind of lining up with with four different white pieces on the uh, c5 to g1 diagonal. Uh, or if you're a pur purist, the a7 to g1 diagonal. Either way, not good. Uh, then I meant to go queen h5. Rook c d8, okay. So the f8 rook needs to be on guard duty, I assume, to guard f7 and to have the f-file under control. I'd have thought rook f d8 would be stronger, because it also allows bishop f8, if need be. Uh, but I assume there is a good reason for this. Rook c d8. c3, yeah, sort of anchoring my knight, trying to make up for the fact I don't have two bishops, and having a strong centralised knight. But I do have a lot of light square weaknesses, that's the problem. So f6, this is the reason for not playing rook fd8. Black plays f6, breaking the Ben Feingold rule of never play f6. Because it's, it's a pawn break, activating the rook. And yeah, this is a, again, it's a position where black is probably the only one who can win this position. I'm kind of stuck defending everything. And despite black's doubled isolated pawns, 
They are remarkably strong when they're doubled and in controlling the centre. The e6 pawn anchors the bishop and it controls uh, some key squares. And the e4 pawn is the splinter. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, in my side. It's preventing me from having uh, maximum flexibility in my pieces. I can't go rook f3 to rook lift. I can't do nice f3 to e5. Uh, rook d3 to double up also would be unplayable. Although I would be able to play rook d2 to double up. Uh, and yeah, it's just, it's just one of those. And also, it's a pass pawn, so it will it will be a uh, an annoyance for the rest of the game. This looks very very good for black, but it's possibly holdable if I if I play precisely. This knight takes e4 is a huge blunder, terrible move, because of course a pawn takes. I assumed knight takes would be played, and I'd forgotten that my bishop was trapped. So. Here, you don't give up, you don't resign, you, or well, some players do, but I don't. You try to get the maximum amount of uh, material, pressure, initiative, uh, whatever you want to call it, for the uh, for the position that you can. So I played bishop takes b5, so I get two pawns. Apparently knight takes b5 is inaccurate because of bishop a6, which is a very nice move, uh, killing all my play. Uh, I suppose I could play a c4 maybe and try and hold it, but then knight d3 comes in and it's horrible. So queen b8 is a mistake. It's still nearly minus three, so it's not uh, it's not a disaster for uh, black. But an octopus knight, knight d6. So my, uh, my knight's almost worth the same as a rook on uh, the sixth rank uh, when it's anchored like this. So I thought I'd kind of got back something. And I think here... Uh, if black takes me, they lose the bishop pair, so that's almost like losing a pawn, because that's what, how much the bishop pair is worth. It's like it's worth an extra pawn. Uh, if they let me be, then then my knight is a lot stronger than it was. Though apparently bishop a6 is a very good move for black. I'm guessing I have to play c4, and then, then black can get their own uh, octopus knight at some point with knight d3. Although I suppose if they did that, I could take on e4. But sooner or later they may have that. All right, so rook c7 was a sort of passive move, and f5 charging at them. It's, again, my only chance. I have to attack on the king side. And takes, takes. So it's minus three. You know, I, I'm not under any delusion that I can, I can like draw this from from here. Uh, but I thought that with enough pressure, maybe I could induce blunders, which I generally am quite good at. Knight e6 to me was a really good move. This uh, this is exactly what I would have played. Knight to e6, just anchoring the knight, guarding g7, uh, potentially going knight f4 at some point, or knight d4, uh, freeing up c5 for the bishop or the rook, uh, and the c file for the rook. Uh, yeah, it's just such a nice move, knight e6. Just completely uh, you know, gets their pieces organised and prevents me from uh, doing anything uh, anything. Uh, on g7 for now. So yeah, queen g4 is a mistake, but to, or inaccuracy. But to be honest, just everything loses, so I have to try this. I wouldn't have been as harsh as to call this inaccurate. All right, king h7, yeah, feels a bit wrong. I think they're a bit scared of me. Bishop g5 to me looked stronger. And can you guess what move I was going to play as white? Well, you need to get counterplay, so h4. I'm sure that there is something good for black, like bishop f4 would be my guess, but if you were black, what would you play in this position? Alright, well, time for my analysis to stop and for the the iron uh, uh, the iron monster to take over. I was looking at h5 briefly, but I felt like bishop f4 might be stronger, and e3 is a fun move. Uh, so h5 is apparently the best move, or e3 is second best. Bishop f4 was on, on the cards for a little while, but it's now dropped off and it's come back again. It's like the fifth best move. Alright, so h5 then. That looks very dangerous, but I assume there's a good reason for this move. Queen takes, yeah, g6, I'd seen this. But then, yes, yeah, something like queen e2? Okay, I guess black just has absolutely no fear. Yeah, this is the kind of position where 
it looks a little bit dangerous for the Black King, but I don't really have a good way to attack it, so it's actually fine. But that would be... I'd be very nervous as Black playing this line. I'd probably go for something else. Anyway, if you said h5, you would be right. And if I don't take the h5 pawn, then you've completely solidified your position. So, good. Alright, so King h7 was a bit inaccurate. Still pretty good for... Uh, like though. Then my ridiculous move, rook d6. So the line that I'd analysed was clearly bishop takes d6 is the best move. Then captures, and they do something. Uh, I assume rook takes c2, but I could be wrong. And I was looking at stuff like um, bishop d4, and I'm assuming it's probably like minus 9 or something silly like that. Uh, it's minus 7, <laughs> so completely lost. But assuming black doesn't play the literally best move, there's something like queen d8, let's say some sort of safety move, then, you know, bishop takes g7. I have lots of counterplay here. Uh, and again, the computer finds just the cool collected move e3, which threatens rook takes g2. And I might have to play stuff like knight takes e3 and then drop my um, drop my bishop on g7. Uh, yeah, so e3. e3 is good. Rook g8, though, is probably good as well. Yes, best move. And yeah, it's just slowly falling apart for me. I think I'm losing the bishop and all the rest of my pieces. So this doesn't work. But I thought at the time that it might be a, a good way of playing it. So yeah, g6 was a mistake. And then my move, double ex, uh, double um, question mark. The opposite is a double exclamation mark. It's not an excellent move, it's a total blunder. So apparently... G6 is minus 2, my move is minus 5. But again, if I'm playing if I'm playing the correct move, I might lose. This is again my kind of my philosophy of the best move is not always the objective best move. Uh chess is very psychological and it's subjective uh, when played by humans. So if you literally play the computer move every time, you you know, you don't have a lot of chance to uh, be lucky, I suppose, might be the right way of saying it. Uh, my luck is greatly decreased the more pieces are traded, and the less complicated the position is. So with knight takes, rook takes, bishop e3 now, you know, black only has three of my pieces to worry about, really, which is, well, I guess you could count the uh, rook on d6 as a piece to worry about, but, yeah, the rook on f1 is maybe useful, rook on d6 useful, Bishop's useful, and yeah, the queen's quite good. So my pieces are active. Uh, knight g7 is not a move I would have considered for black, but I'm sure there's, there's other moves as well. Maybe bishop c8. Uh, apparently, yeah, rook f... Rook f e8. Bishop, yeah, bishop c8 was a move briefly. It's now fallen off. All right, okay, it's not so bad, actually. Minus, minus two for, like, knight g7, but the other moves are about minus one and a half. Yeah, queen c7, sort of activating. Queen, knight g7 is not a move that would spring to mind. But anyway, queen g3, rook e6. So that was the idea of knight g7, to go rook e6. And then look, you know, the 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 computer is saying that white's best chance to trade off all the pieces. And then, I don't know, through some sort of miracle, not lose. Wow, g5, yeah. And then king g7 again, nice cool collective move. Rook f6, looking a bit scary, you know, black just plays again the, the uh, very uh, precise queen takes e5, not even worried about h6 dropping, because there's nothing after queen takes h6. King g8, black's safe. And this is the position that I would not have uh, much hope of, of getting anything from. This looks like a total loss, because I don't have enough pieces to effectively... Uh, cause problems. So bishop e3, despite it being a blunder, I think is the best move. Uh, or, the, or it gives me the greatest chance to win if you want to be uh, pedantic about it. Alright, so yeah, bishop g5 is clearly a mistake, but h5 is the best move. Queen g3, and I assume that black just takes on d6 and then, then continues playing. Although, interestingly enough, if black does bishop takes d6 right away, I thought I had something here. Yeah, e takes d6 is the move I was going to do. And then let's, let's say rook takes c2, because that looks like the best move. Okay, it's not as good as I thought. Uh, I thought it was about level, but maybe maybe black still has something here. 
thought that I had maybe like Queen H4 afterwards or Knight takes F7 and you know Black's in real trouble, but apparently F5 and I'm I'm still just absolutely lost. Or Matt minus four. So still no chance. <laughs> It's amazing that I won this game, isn't it? With, with so many blunders back and forth and me being what, minus five the entire time. All right, so bishop g5 is a key error. Apparently minus two is still good enough to win, though. Bishop takes g5 is correct. I had to trade off the piece. And then knight takes was like the key blunder then. It was minus two and it went to like plus four and a half. It was nearly a, what, a six point... No, more than that. Nearly, nearly seven. Yeah, ne nearly a seven-point uh, swing. So, so Black lost 700 centre pawns in one move. No wonder their average was quite quite high. Right, so H takes is correct, and then I still don't have enough. Although it looks very scary after Queen H3 check. It makes perfect sense why they don't play it. Uh, but I assume that after Queen H3, King G8, and I don't have enough. All right, so Knight takes Blunder... Then knight takes h6, I blunder straight back, of course. Oh, very nice. I'd missed this. Queen h4, I thought they could take my knight. Um, but of course I have rook takes. It's winning on the spot. And then wherever they go with the king, I go queen takes g5, mate. Yeah, missed that as well. Missed that my rook would have hit h6. Yes, yeah, very, very nice. And then black, I don't even know what black does here. Uh, H5 or some weird move like that. It looks completely winning. Maybe it's like F6 and they don't quite lose, but they just, like get a terrible position where it's uh, it's definitely an advantage for white. So anyway, knight takes H6 blunder. All right, then king takes H6 blunder. Uh, so then, okay, so we're level now. So we've blundered, we've blundered enough. That it's level. That's good. King g7. Alright, so where's the key mistake? Queen e8 is one of them. Queen e8's a key error. It wasn't active enough. Uh, Black should actually go e3 trying to stop me. Uh, so e3. I thought I was winning after e3. After this move. This is what I analysed. Because if king takes, can you see how I win? Well, if king takes, I have queen g6, forcing the king to um, e7, and then queen to e6, mate. So, if they move the king they, uh, somewhere else, they lose instantly. So rook takes are the only other move. And if they do uh, this rook takes, I thought I had a win with rook g6, but possibly not. Yeah, they go king here, and I don't have enough. Yeah, it looks like I've uh, made a mistake here, doesn't it? Uh, so if I turn on the computer, I'm sure it will say... Oh, it's level. Okay, why is it level? Rook takes up here. Oh, now it isn't level. <laughs> oh, that's funny. The computer can't work it out. It seems to think at first it's level, but then the moment it actually plays the move, it then realises... Wait, no, it isn't. Now it, does it. now it thinks it is. You wouldn't think it would be so difficult. Um, I assume I have some really long-winded way of uh, perpetual check. Uh, if it is indeed drawn, but the computer just can't make up its mind. It's, it's either a draw or, or a win for black. It's no way I'm winning. So yeah, queen h4 and queen g... Okay, queen g4 is the key check. So after king g7, queen g4. I see. So then the king goes over here, and then you can play queen d7. That's the key plan. Yes, then total draw. Now, wherever, wherever they go, queen g4 again. Just check, you just check somewhere on h file on the h file. You always go queen g4 check when they're on the g file and it's a draw. All right. I'm not sure I'd have seen that blindfolded, but I'm, I'd see that in a real game. So rook takes f7 doesn't quite work. And actually, oh, whoops, sorry. And rook takes f7. If the other rook takes, I. It probably does make a difference. I'm probably lost now. Well, I, yeah, I'm not going to play rook b6. That looks... Oh, no, I still still draw. 
Yeah, good for me. Yeah, King F8 to go rookie G8, mate. So here, what is my draw? It's Yeah, it's not going to be rook D6 or pawn C4. I can guarantee that. It's going to be a check. Yeah, this looks like I'm I'm lost here. But maybe, maybe I draw with queen F6. Uh, yeah, maybe... Yeah, maybe I've lost this one. So I have to take the queen then, g6. Queen takes g6 is the, is the move. But after king f8, I can't see how I how I do anything. <laughs> oh, queen h6. Okay, yes. Yeah, I see. Okay, so then if king g8, I go rook g6 and I win. Oh, no, I don't win. G oh, queen g5. And then if rook g7, something happens. Can't work it out. Why is rook g7? Oh, rook d8, of course. Yes, and they lose their queen, then I, I have to take the draw by perpetual, I think. Yeah, the king just goes to h7, then back to g8, and I keep checking on h4 and d8. Alright, so, yeah, king, king uh, f8, rook d8. And if king f8 here... Uh, oh, wow, queen g6. <laughs> Queen g6 pinning, and then I can go. Um, I assume I can do all sorts of checks and things. But yeah, the computer is not happy with white at all. It's either a draw or it's a win for black, and it's one of those ridiculous positions that I can't work out. Either way, I'm, I'm glad I didn't play this. So Queen f6 was my move, which again is a blunder. <laughs> I should have done Rook f4, uh, doing the same thing as before. So king h7 is now a blunder. I thought king g8 was better because it, it meant there weren't any, any checks. So king h7 was the blunder uh, that settled the game. Yeah, king g8, then I then I play rook f4 and queen e7, I assume, and I don't, don't have enough. So yeah, king h7, then rook f4, and it's a forced mate. So yeah, g5, queen h6, and then mate in one after rook h6 or rook h4, mate. Fascinating game. Very, very complicated to play, I have to say. That was extremely difficult. I uh, hope, hope you found that interesting. And I think it's been just under an hour, so I will uh, I will end this video here. I uh, hope you liked the blindfolded game. And I'll see you next time. Bye.